Hi, welcome to another episode of Paul Thom Power, Power System Design's podcast on the latest in power and power design. I'm your host, Alex Paul. Today, I've got Tom Sporer. He's with Microchip, and we're going to talk about an area that's dear to some engineers, and that's uh, active updates of uh, high availability power supplies. Okay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, it's a big issue, right? I mean, if it's a high availability system and you want to update it, don't you have to wait for it to be down? <laughs> yeah, and that's always the challenge. I mean, we've, we've got customers that are designing high availability systems. Servers come to mind where the customer wants to perhaps reflash, change the programming, the software in the power supply itself while the server's running without taking the server offline, without the power supply going out of regulation. Well, but I mean, that strikes me as a very difficult challenge because if it's running, how can you update what it's, the commands that it's using? It's definitely tricky. Um, in a switch mode power supply, there is a small window where you can affect change of the software without affecting the output of the power supply. And so what we've done is developed a product that helps optimize for that eventuality of wanting to change that code while the supply is running. Really? So you're literally timing it and catching those micro nano dead spaces between cycles to insert the code? Oh yeah, fractions of a microsecond. I mean, you've got lots of time to get the new version of the code loaded to the controller while there's nothing else going on. I'm, not while nothing else going on, but the supply is running out of one of your flash panels. You can upload a new image of code to the other flash panel in the background. No rush on that. But that switch over time from the old code to the new code is very critically timed. Well, I could imagine because you have to understand the system perfectly understand the timing, your timing's got to be spot on, and then of course your code segments have to be short enough to fit into those gaps. You're switching over all of the code, so you've got a whole new version um, in the new code drop that has been loaded by your bootloader, say, over however um, loaded into the system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when you switch over, we switch from the one flash panel to the other flash panel and immediately start executing the new code. The first thing that new code does is maybe reinitialize some variables and things, but then it gets right back to its business of regulating that control loop. Well, and what are some of the advantages to the end user? You were talking about server farms and the like. This ability then gives you what? Well, as much as our power supply designers want to be careful in designing a power supply that's always going to work, they find over time things change in the field and they may want to change their code f for whatever reason. They don't know what it is that might need to be changed, so we need to give them that full flexibility. Um, things like changing the PM bus interface, um, adding commands or something, that, that's fairly straightforward because it's not as time critical. But changing something like the compensator control loop, which is very time critical, that's tough. And that's what people want to be able to do, possibly. They can't tell you why now, but they want to know they have that flexibility in the future. Well, uh, there are a lot of bad jokes that are, like, rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Exactly. So, yep. for an engineer, you want to have as many tools as available as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of tools, I see you have this demo here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the product itself and how you're addressing this? Okay, so what we're demonstrating here is our MP Lab starter kit for digital power. Um, this is available on Microchip's website. This particular model is equipped with our new DSPIC 33EP GS family device, which has the capability for this live update. Um, and what we're demonstrating here with the board is the board is actually got pre-programmed. This particular one's pre-programmed with two versions of the software in partition one and partition two. And it switches over every 30 seconds from one partition to the other partition. Um, and what we're showing on the scope is that during that switch over time, we're maintaining full regulation. Got it, got it. So, <clears throat> what f does the engineer need to know to implement this solution in their solution? Um, Really nothing. I mean, since the engineer doesn't know what he's going to want to change in the next version of the code, should there be the necessity for another version, there's not much that he needs to take into account when he writes the first version. I mean, obviously he needs to be cognizant of the fact that someday he might want to do an update, but he doesn't need to say, well, I can only update this or I can only update that. We can update 100% of that flash image. Very um, nice. Yeah. So now, obviously this is a kit that's available to the, or will be available to the design community so that they can evaluate this for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, what other support are you offering right now to help the engineers get on top of this technology? 
Okay, so well, we have the, the tools. We've extended our MP Lab IDE with the tools that make this possible. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you want to do in, this, in the switchover from one version of the code to another version is maintain all of the variables that your first version of the code knew about, all the history and things. Um, so our tool makes it possible when you recompile for that second version of the code to use all of the old variables and their old values from the, the original code. And the tools make that all possible. Very nice. And these are online tools? Um, this is MP Lab IDE. Oh, okay. Um, they're so available it's, online. They're yes. available online. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, now, what are some of the other, I mean, you obviously you have FAEs that can help the engineer. You've got people, like if I walk in the front door, you'll be able to help me with just about everything I need in this, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, when this board goes up on our website with this particular um, new device on it, we will have the firmware that this board is running available. Um, so the board can be bought from Microchip Direct or from distributors um, with different code on it, but you can download this particular source code and look at how we did it as a starting point. Got it. Um, this is one way that it can be done. And what's another way? That's the point. It's a starting point. This is, oh, right. this so is then our preferred way of doing it. Customers um, certainly might find other ways to take advantage of the hardware that's in this device, um, but this seems like the most straightforward way. Well, that's a very good point, Tom, is that you, know, you show an engineer a solution, they'll figure out some ways to use it in ways you hadn't predicted. Potentially, yep. <laughs> so, um, where can they go to get more information on this? So, you go to microchip.com um, slash power, and that'll point to um, this, you'll find this new family up there and um, follow through the links. You can get to the code, you can get to this board, um, things like that. Excellent. Well, Tom, before I end the show, I always give my guests the opportunity to have the last word on my show. It could be a little bit more about the board or about the company or just a tip for our audience, but the floor is yours. Okay. Well, one of the things I want to go into a little more detail is show what we've actually accomplished with this demo. Excellent. So, um, on the left side of this oscilloscope, this is a compensator that's a two-pole, two-zero compensator. And as you can see, it's not working very well. As the load is varying, we've got about 150 millivolts of swing on the regulated output. At this point in time in the scope, we switch over to a whole new compensator while the power supply is running. And you can see the new compensator is a three pole, three zero, which you can't tell from the screen, but what you can tell is, is a lot better regulator. And so we're showing changing something as fundamental as the compensator code in real time without losing regulation on this supply. Well, and that's the key, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So very, very powerful tool there. Right. If you can change that, you can change anything. That's an excellent way to look at it. Yep. So thank you so much, Tom, for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time, especially at a busy show like APEC. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Oh, the pleasure's mine. And I'd like to take a moment to thank you all out there in the audience for taking the time to watch us. We wouldn't be here without you. Tell your friends. This is Alex Paul for Paul Tom Power. Have a great day.